Welcome to the Folktale Project, this is Dan Scholes. Today we have our final Japanese tale, and this story features the Oni and other just mythical creatures of Japan. This is Watanabe Kills the Great Spider. During the time in which Watanabe was forming his plan to destroy the Onis that lurked in the Oye Mountains, the brave Reiko fell sick, and daily grew weaker and paler. When the demons found this out, they sent the three-eyed imp called Mitsumi Kozo to plague him. This imp, which had a snout like a hog's three monstrous blue eyes and a mouth full of tusks, was glad the brave soldier could no longer fight the Onis. He would approach the sick man in his chamber, leer horribly at him, loll out his tongue, and pull down the lids of his eyes with his hairy fingers until the sight sickened Reiko more and more. But Reiko, well or ill, always slept with his trusty sword under his pillow, and pretending to be greatly afraid and to cower under the bedclothes, the Kozo grew bolder and bolder. When the imp was near the bed, Reiko drew his blade and cut the oni across his huge double nose. This made the demon howl, and he ran away, leaving tracks of blood. When Tsuna and his band heard of their brave master's exploit, they came to congratulate him and offered to hunt out the demon and destroy him. They followed the red drops until they came to a cavern in the mountains. Entering this, they saw in the gloom a spider six feet high with legs as long as fishing poles, and as thick as a daikon radish. The two great yellow eyes glared at them like lamps. They noticed a great gaping wound as if done by a sword cut on his snout. It was a horrible, nasty, hairy thing to fight with swords, since to get near enough they would be in danger of the creature's claws. So Tsuna went and chopped down a tree as thick as a man's leg, leaving the roots on, while his comrades prepared a rope to tie the monster like a fly in a web. Then, with a loud yell, Tsuno rushed at the spider, felled him with a blow, and held him down with the tree and roots so he could not bite or use his claws. Seeing this, his comrades rushed in and bound the monster's legs to his body so that he could not move. Drawing their swords, they passed them through his body and finished him. Returning in triumph to the city, they found their dear captain recovered from his illness. Reiko thanked his brave warriors for their exploits, made a feast for them, and gave them many presents. At this feast, Captain Reiko told them that he had received orders from the Mikado to march against the Oni's den in Tango, slaughter them all, and rescue the prisoners he should find there. Then he showed them his commission written in large letters. I command you, Reiko, to chastise the Oni's. He also allowed them to examine the gold brocade bag in which it was kept, and which one of the fair ladies of the court had made for him with her own tapering fingers. At this time, many families in Kyoto were grieving over the loss of their children, and even while Suna had been away, several lovely damsels had been seized and taken to the demon's den. Lest the Onis might hear of their coming and escape, the four trusty men disguised themselves as Komuso, or wandering priests of the mountains. They put on over their helmets huge hats like washbowls made of straw woven so tightly that no one could see their faces. They covered their armor with very cheap and common clothes, and then, after worshipping at the shrines, began their march. And that is the story of Watanabe Kills the Great Spider. And it's an excellent lead-in for our next Japanese tale when we pick back up with Japan. The story of Reiko and the Shiten Doji. But I like this story just by itself as well. It's It's a wonderful story about Reiko and his men, his trusted men, and of the young hero inside it, Tsuna, and waiting to see what he's about to do and how he so cleverly defeats the Oni. This is Dan Schultz for the Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you like to get your podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter at Folktale Project. You can find us on Auto Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Spotify, 
anywhere you like to listen. And you can always head over to folktaleproject.com where you'll find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. As always, have a wonderful weekend, and thank you so much for listening.